Hello. It's Wednesday, and have you ever had one of those weeks? I have. Um, this week, I basically stripped more models than I painted. At least in terms of finishing them. I painted quite a lot of models and then I stripped them. So, not Captain Badrook. He did not get stripped, which is good. I'm really happy with how he's turning out. But I didn't do much on him. I basically just base coated in the white areas. Um, I fixed up that yellow line that was around there. Did a few more highlights on the coat. Made this a bit more faded and pale. There, that spot. There's, there's the good light. No shine on that. Finally got inside the boss ball there to paint. Um, yeah, not a problem with him. He's fine. He's doing great. Yard. Um, not the commissar. Commissar's going fine. Although I haven't done much on him, I've mostly just rebase coated that sword black. Touched up a few areas on the coat. Nothing much to report on him. Basically, the guys that I didn't do much painting on, they're fine. However, <laughs> yeah, he's been stripped and reprimed again. There is a story behind this. Uh, this guy, yeah, he looks like he's fine on on my camera here, on my little camera screen. Um, and he is. Paint jobs, you know, adequate. It's not great. The colour scheme is fine. I'm using the colour scheme. But he was an absolute nightmare to paint. Um, as was the other test model for the Chosen Axis. These guys... Absolute pain in the bum to get painted. They took far longer than they should have done. And there are two reasons. Well, there's basically just one reason for this, and it's that I did everything in the wrong order. And used uh, an airbrush when I shouldn't have used an airbrush at all. So the, sh the quick version is, I airbrushed all the skin first, like I did with the Garrix Reavers. And sure, that gets you the skin done really quickly, but the downside of doing that is that you then have to go back over everything that's going to be metallic or black and repaint it black. Now, on this guy, it didn't seem like much of a problem. You know, he's got this one axe head, his helmet. It's not a lot of stuff. As soon as I hit this guy with his t two axes, and his metal belt and a whole bunch of stuff on there, I realised that this was ridiculous. Especially since the amount of touch-up that I had to do, and that's touch-up that I had to do if you're not as neat of a painter as me, and I'm not the neatest, then the amount of touch-up you'd have to do would be immense. And I got a lot of paint on the skin, and I basically had to repaint all of the skin in order to fix all the touch-ups, because when you airbrush something, it's very difficult to recreate the gradients and the blends that come through with the airbrush. Heck, you might not even be getting the actual colour that you've put into the airbrush in the first place, because it'll be coming out thinner than if you painted it on with a brush. So when you're going to do touch-ups with your paintbrush, it's actually very difficult to colour match, because you might not be, you know, you might have to mix a bunch of paints together in order to get the colour matching correctly. So I basically ended up just repainting all of the skin. And that took about an hour and a half on one model. And that's not great. And that's because I was actually trying to match it to what was there before, rather than just painting it from scratch. So that's not the best way to paint these guys. It worked, but I couldn't in all good conscience make a how-to-paint video. There's a truck going past, you can probably hear it. I could not... I'll wait until it's gone. Yeah, I couldn't in good conscience make a video entitled How to Paint Chosen Axes when I personally did not believe that was a good way to paint them. Um, 
And then things went from, you know, just slightly depressing to worse, to ba actually bad. And this guy just completely broke off his base. I can repair him, but he's never going to be tap dancing ever again. He's such at such an angle that it's really difficult. If you can see there. Yeah, he came off his base and that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back and it just flung me into a big uh, kind of crisis of confidence and massive amounts of imposter syndrome kicking in. So I didn't even finish painting this guy and I probably won't. Um, to be honest, most of these chosen axes are probably destined for the bin. But not this guy. This guy, even though the tongue of his little dragon axe is uh, broken, it still looks fine. It's just not quite as sticking out its tongue. It's not going like the normal one. This guy hadn't been stripped as often as the other, the other guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this guy up. I'm going to get it all on camera. Start to finish, I'm going to do that later today. And I'm not going to use the airbrush, and I'm just going to paint the this, this skin by hand. And if there's a Chosen Axes video up on the Patreon in a few days from now, then you know it's worked. If there isn't, then it means that this guy has gone out the window, and I'm painting Spike Claw Swarm instead. <laughs> who I am completely confident about painting. But I basically ended up in this weird situation where I don't think I can paint skin tones at all by hand. Um, I can do them with an airbrush, but on these models, there's... It's a lot of skin, but it's not as easy. There's such small models compared to Garrick's Weavers, and there's such little delineation between where the skin ends and the, meta the metallic start. On Garrick's Weavers, it was easy, because, you yeah, know, the top half of the model is skin, the bottom half is not skin. It was pretty pretty simple delineation there. Heck, you could even mask off the bottom half of the model when you're airbrushing. But on these guys, not so much. And yeah, I just got very frustrated. Very angry at my own abilities. And uh, it just wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. I know some people will be looking at these models and going... You're crazy. These are fine. There's nothing wrong with them. They look perfectly good to me. They look better than I could paint. And to that I say, that may well be. But I'm not happy with them. And if I'm not happy with them, then I can't look at them. And yeah, it's a weird thing. It sounds crazy. And it might be crazy. But that's what's happened. These chosen axes have been an absolute nightmare to paint. Um, I quite like the, the models. I've just had such a frustrating time painting them. And I think that throughout the whole thing, it's just because I've been painting them in the wrong order. So, yeah. That addendum. I was editing the video for today's work in progress. So this is going to be a little bit late, be after midnight, so technically Wednesday in America, I guess. Um, and I thought I would update on how I'm doing. So I've been painting this guy on camera. Um, the metallics have gone really, really well so far. Um, I've been doing the thing where I narrate while I paint, and I think I'm much preferring doing that than doing a voiceover after the fact. I can always add bits in the voiceover later, but yeah. The metallics have gone really, really well. I'm dead chuffed with how he's turning out, and I already think he, his metallics already look better than the metallics on the test models and the one the Chosen Axes I don't like. So I'm very happy with how he's turning out. However, I forgot something that I painted, and if you've seen the thumbnail, you'd have been like, where are those tanks? Here are the tanks. I painted some tanks. <laughs> um, how do you forget that you painted some tanks, Rob? Uh, because I was really preoccupied with not being able to paint skin. That's that's uh, how I forgot that I painted some tanks. I did. I basically did both of these at the same time. Um, did some airbrushing work with them. 
I used uh, this Soviet camouflage set from AK Interactive. They're very nice paints. They go straight through the airbrush without any thinning, which is awesome. So this is Russian green and Russian tan, and this is just Russian green. Um, some highlights added with other GW colors and some sponging, dry brushing, decals, a bit of masking with some other stuff. But yeah, these are my Griffin pattern chimeras. Griffin pattern means Forge World add an auto cannon turret, but they're out of print now. So get some Predator turrets off eBay. They fit. You'd, all you have to do is sand out this hole here. And then the turret just fits, push fits on top of the uh, existing ring mount for the Chimera turret. So yeah, Griffin pattern Chimeras. I think they look awesome. Armoured Fist. 641st Platoon of the Cadian 6th Red Armoured Regiment. This is the command squads. As you can see, we've got the. I've dug up some Ford Wall track guards from my bits box. I've still got, I think I've got one more pair of these left somewhere. Stuck a dozer blade on it because why not? Uh, command, command. Tips off with this one. Cadia. Um, a skull. <laughs> Some lines for kill markings or something. Sandbags off the heavy weapon sprue for guardsmen. So, yeah, this is going to be whitewashed down with some washable white paint. But this is all just the initial airbrush work, the initial color modulation, um, the decals, and some weathering with a sponge and a bit of dry brushing. And then you put the whitewash on afterwards. So I did these. These only took me about two hours total, about an hour each. Because doing this to this standard on a tank is really, really quick with an airbrush. Um, so I kind of forgot that I painted them. But here they are. They've, they've gone really well. I've got one more Chimera to paint. I might do a fourth one. Um, I do have the parts for it. It's just completely unassembled and just sitting in a bits box. Uh, yeah, there we go. Tanks. So now I'm going to put the rest of the video on. I'll do an editing thing. A trick. Sha sha. No one will know the difference. That's my Wednesday work in progress. It's a bit of a bit of a depressing, sad one, really. Yeah, I'm behind schedule. But keeping a schedule's never been easy for me. The football's on, apparently. I've not been paying any attention. All I know is that it's quiet outside right now because the football's on telly. <laughs>